This Christmas, I'm sharing with you from Charles Spurgeon's Christmas Sermon, and this is our second installment on Luke 2.14. The angels sang of Christ and the salvation which he came into this world to work out. And what they said of this salvation was this. They said, first, that it gave glory to God, secondly, that it gave peace to humans, and thirdly, that it was a token of God's goodwill toward the human race. First, they said that this salvation gave glory to God. They had been present on many august occasions, and angels had joined in many a solemn chorus to the praise of their, their Almighty Creator. They were present at the creation. They had seen many a planet fashioned between the palms of God and wheeled by His eternal hands through the infinitude of space. They had sung solemn songs over many a world which the Great One had created. We doubt not they had often chanted, Blessing and honor and glory and majesty and power and dominion and might be unto God that sits on the throne. But this time, when they saw God stoop from His throne and become a babe, hanging upon a woman's breast, they lifted their notes higher still, and reaching to the utmost stretch of angelic music, they gained the highest notes of the divine scale of praise, and they sung glory to God in the highest, for higher in goodness they felt God could not go. Thus their highest praise they gave to Him in the highest act of His Godhead. Then note if angels shouted before and when the world was made, their hallelujahs were more full, more strong, more magnificent, if not more hearty, when they saw Jesus Christ born of the Virgin Mary to be man's Redeemer. What is the instructive lesson to be learned from this first syllable of the angel's song? Why this? that salvation is God's highest glory. He is glorified in every dewdrop that twinkles to the morning sun. He is magnified in every wood flower that blossoms in the thicket, although it lived to blush unseen and waste its sweetness in the forest air. God is glorified in every bird that warbles on the spray, in every lamb that skips the mead, do not the fishes in the sea praise Him? Do not all created things extol Him? Do not the stars exalt Him when they write His name upon the azure of heaven in their golden letters? Do not the lightnings adore Him when they flash His brightness in arrows of light, piercing the midnight darkness? Do not thunders extol Him when they roll like drums in the march of the God of armies. But sing, sing, O oh universe, till you have exhausted yourself. You cannot not afford a song so sweet as the song of incarnation. Though creation may be a majestic organ of praise, it cannot reach the compass of the golden canticle incarnation. There is more in that than in creation, more melody in Jesus in the manger than there is in worlds on worlds rolling their grandeur round the throne of the Most High. The whole of God is glorified in Christ, and though some part of the name of God is written in the universe, it is here best read, in Him who was the Son of Man and yet the Son of God.